The first thing I would say is you are unbelievably lucky. You are coming of age at probably the best time in human history. This is a bigger deal than it sounds, right? Because the, what, what makes these models so magical is that they're, they're general. It's going to be better at everything across the board. There is so much wisdom in this interview. Sam talks about what keeps him up at night. He shares exclusive details about GPT-5. And he also reveals how people like you and me can actually prepare for the AI revolution. And that's only the beginning. The benefits to humanity of making intelligence broadly available as a tool to let humanity build the future, I think is quite remarkable. By the way, this interview is from the World Government Summit, which happened in the UAE this year. And Sam Altman was invited to speak about AI and his vision for the future. I think right now we don't realize how limited we are by the limits on intelligence and how expensive it is and how difficult it is. But if you imagine a world where everyone gets a great personalized medical advice, we can use these tools to discover all sorts of new science. And also, just speaking personally, I think this is like, the most exciting quest here I can imagine being on. Now, Sam keeps talking about this borderline utopia, which begs the question, how far are we from this amazing future? So the honest answer, of course, is, is we really don't know. You know, this is new science. We're discovering new things all of, all of the time. The rate of discovery is incredible, but it, it's sort of hard to know exactly how far we have to go. Okay, but what are the changes that are already happening right now? What I will say, though, is we hear all the time from scientists who say that our tools make them much more productive. They don't have an easy way to quantify that, but they say it's substantial. You know, if you could make every scientist on Earth twice as productive, what that would mean for the rate of scientific discovery, because this is also new. This is like a little bit more than a year old, but we'll find out. Now, what about the people who are against AI? What about all the schools that have banned ChatGPT? When ChatGPT first came out, the first thing that happened is school districts were falling all over themselves to ban ChatGPT the fastest and declare you know, this existential threat to education. And other people got concerned later, but it really started with education. ChatGPT came out in November of 2022. So has anything changed in the past 14 months? Have people changed their mind about AI? Education was also the place it reversed the quickest. Teachers and school districts embraced it and said, you know, hey, this is part of the future. This is something that we all want. I really believe this will be one of the most transformative technologies for education we've had in, in recent times. Now here is how Sam Altman thinks governments should respond to the AI revolution. Because there are all of these things that people are still afraid of about large language models and AI, but governments who embrace it and say, let's think about ways we can reform how the government does its job, how people fill out forms or do whatever they need to do. As you said, we have not yet seen as much world changing uh, application as we'd like. Maybe we've seen some, but not as much as we'd like. I mean, Sam Altman is right. ChatGPT has 100 million monthly active users, which is almost exactly 1% of the entire human population. Literally 99% of people haven't even noticed that the AI revolution is happening, which means that nearly all people will miss the AI revolution, just like they miss the internet wave and the social media wave. My goal is to make sure that you are not one of those people. That's why I created an exclusive community for us who are taking AI seriously. So if that sounds like you, make sure to join. First link in the description. The current technology that we have, I mean, it's like that very first cell phone with the black and white screen that can only display those like numbers and, you know, it just didn't do much. And then it took us... I don't know how long from that, but many decades from that to the iPhones we have today. Um, but we have now is like unimaginable at the time of those like first primitive cell phones. And I think that's that's what we have to push forward. It's nice to hear Sam remind us of just how early we really are. GPT-4 might seem incredible today, but in a few years we'll look at it the same way we're looking at Nokia 3310. We're at this barely useful cell phone, but people still like making phone calls. But that's not what we want to deliver. We want to deliver the iPhone 16 or 15 or whatever the current one is. All right, so what's the timeline before OpenAI really changes the world? You know, it took the world a while to do that last time around, so give us some time. But I will say, I think in a few more years, it'll be much better than it is now and in a decade it should be pretty remarkable now one thing that will definitely happen before 2030 is the release of gpt5 and this is what sam had to say about that it's gonna be smarter it'll be multimodal it'll be faster what, what you know who knows what the thing that i think really matters is it's gonna be smarter this is a bigger deal than it sounds right because the what, what makes these models so magical is that they're they're general if it's a little bit better if it's a little bit smarter that means it's a little bit better at everything so when it comes to GPT-5, what is Sam specifically excited about? The thing that I think is most exciting is it's not like this model is going to get a little better at this task and not really better at these or, you know, it's not that. It's, it's because we're going to make the model smarter, it's going to be better at 
everything across the board. Given that Sam Altman talks about regulation all the time, what would he actually do if he was the leader of a country? What I would do is try to, I would try to find a way to create more of a regulatory sandbox where people could experiment with this technology. I don't know about you, but that sounds like regulatory capture to me. But we are going to need some sort of a global system for what happens with the most powerful of these systems because they will have truly global impact. What sort of safety measures do we want in place before you can deploy uh, like a super intelligence or you know, however you want to call an AGI. So how are the governments doing today? Are they overreacting to AI or underreacting? Frankly speaking, I think we're still on the stage and this is not necessarily bad, but we're still on the stage of a lot of discussion. So there's, you know, everybody in the world is having a conference, everybody's got an idea, a policy paper. But at some point in the next few years, I think we have to move towards like an action plan. This is a big thing. Like, Given how important this moment is, is Sam Altman optimistic about the creation of AGI or even ASI? I am very high conviction that we can manage our way through this, but it's going to take a great deal of collaboration um, and it's going to take the, our leaders of the world coming together. But what about the countries that don't have a lot of resources? We're giving this a lot of thought. You know, we want to have like an offering that makes sense. But in the meantime, I think what people are doing right now, which is just sort of use these APIs or run open source models, I, I think that'll make sense. Now here comes the hard question. Will open AI ever be open again? I think you should expect us to open source more things over time, but exactly what and when and how we're trying to figure out. There, there are like great open source models, open source language models out in the world now. You know, I don't think what the world needs is like another similar model. Um, so we'd like to do something that is helpful and new and we're trying to figure out what that might be. Now this is an interesting topic. What keeps Sam Altman up at night? The keep up at night is easy. It's all of the sci-fi stuff. Uh, you know, I think sci-fi writers are a very smart bunch. And in, in the decades of sci-fi about AI, uh, there have been unbelievably creative ways to imagine where things really go wrong. And I'm not that interested in like the killer robots walking down the street direction of things going wrong. I'm much more interested in the like very subtle societal misalignments through no particular ill intention. Um, things just go horribly wrong. On a more positive note, what makes him jump out of bed in the morning? But the thing that wakes me up in the morning with energy every day is what I actually believe is things are just going to go tremendously right. The reason that we go think so hard about how to deploy this technology is the upside is is remarkable. Um, I think we can easily imagine a world in the not super distant future where everybody's got a better life than people have today. Are there any specific concepts from the future that Sam thinks will actually exist? I think we can raise the standard of living so incredibly much. That's like pretty amazing. This is like kind of how I think about it, but people are like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to say it anyway. If you think about everybody on Earth getting a the resources of a company of like hundreds of thousands of really competent people and what that would do, you know, if you have like an AI programmer, AI lawyer, um, AI marketer, AI strategist, and not just one of those, but many of each, and you get to sort of like decide how to use those, to use that to kind of create whatever you want to create, we're all going to get a lot of great stuff. The creative power of humanity with tools like that should be remarkable. Now we're getting to my favorite part of the interview. What advice does Sam Altman have to teenagers or people in their 20s? The first thing I would say is you are unbelievably lucky. You are coming of age at probably the best time in human history. And you will be able to use these tools to do things that the people in the generation before you couldn't even imagine. You'll be able to start companies that are phenomenally more impactful and successful than people the generation before you could. And you can kind of go do whatever you want. Please listen to Sam Altman and actually do something about this great opportunity. I don't care what it is, but no matter what, you have to take massive action. And if you're not sure where to begin or what to do, start by joining my exclusive AI community. Link in the description.